Hello and welcome to another episode of An Appointment with the Doctor. And today I'm joined with another pretend doctor. Um, you might know her from Holby City, but she's done so, so much. I'm going to talk lots about it. Please welcome Chizzy Akadulu. <laughs> yes! Hello, 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 hello. Oh, I can't believe you've got your fan. Right, stay there. Oh, I don't go anywhere without my fan, baby girl. I think it's early menopause. Well, hello. Fierce. Now, I have my shade fan, but it's broken. I've got another one for you. I've got to put it in the post, okay. haven't I? Um, hello, hello, hello. Thank you for joining hello, me hello. on my metaphysical sofa, as it were, um, because I'm here in Cardiff and you're there in London. Indeed. Um, it's so sweet of you to give up some of your time to join me. Um, oh, it's so lovely to be invited onto your show. Well... I, like I could do this without having you guest appear. You'd never speak to me again. I wouldn't. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. I've made some notes. I've got some questions for you. I'm rather excited. Um, you are one of my favourite people in the world because you make me laugh um, to the extent where I have to change my underwear. So I love that. I'm thrilled that you can join me on this. Is that from wetting yourself or creaming yourself? Let's say the first. The first. Okay. Are we allowed to get dirty or is this supposed to be pudgy? <laughs> This is, um, well, my niece and nephew watch it. Oh, sorry, niece and nephew. Um, but don't worry about it. They, my sister can explain things if she needs to. Indeed, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I, love your, I love your dress, by the way. Thank you very much. It's my um, pride dress. Pride! It's and we're recording this in Pride Month, so it seems apt. Of course we are. Um, Yes, unfortunately, so many cancelled this year. Yeah. Um, as has everything else, you know, the world has gone um, weird. Yes. But, uh, I think it's up to people like you and me to bring some joy and sparkle and life and laughter into it. Well, we try, don't we? We do. We try quite hard. Yeah. People have told me I'm very trying. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should get rid of those people. Is it though? Maybe I Is should. Is it though? Um, so I'm going to chat to you about your career, if I may. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you're ready, yeah. I've been a fan of yours for, for quite some time before I got to meet you. Um, oh. I was a fan of yours without realising I was a fan of yours. Because I saw you in shows and I, I found something out today which has got me so excited. And I'm going to mention it and you probably won't remember it at all, but that's fine. Um, okay. So oh. you've been... Um, doing the old acting job for quite some time now. Yeah, do you know what? It's almost, I think it's almost 20, 20 years now. Yeah, about, I think, 19, 20 years. It's, um, um, you've done, I remember that you had a small role in EastEnders. Very small. That was one of my very first roles on TV. Um, yeah. Would you like to go back and do more or something like that? Or is there another soap that you'd like to try? Do you know what? If I do a soap, um, I would like to do... You know, like a three to six month stint mm -hmm. of a character who comes in and is is just there has to be something, there has to be a really big storyline towards that character. Come in, fuck shit up and leave. That's what I would like. I wouldn't okay. want to stay uh long term. Because now that I've done it long term with one character, mm -hmm. as much as I loved it, I don't really want to do that again uh in a soap. Although Holby isn't a soap, it's a continuing drama, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um so you did quite a lot of your early career was CBBC. Yeah, uh, I did a lot of kids TV. Stupid, Roman's Empire. Oh, no, that was adult. Roman's Empire was an adult programme. Was it? Oh, my apologies. Scoop, okay. And there's a picture of you behind as Jinx. A Jinx, yes, the fairy. That was one of my, um, I'd say probably one of my favourite characters to play. Um, not just because I was skinny, uh, <laughs> but I had this beautiful big red dress and these big high shoes and and of course, I was invisible. Um, I loved her. I loved Jinx. Whenever I would appear, I would appear with a puff of smoke and always jump in. And, it was, and then when I'd always leave, like going doing that. Oh, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Yeah, that sounds like the kind of appearance and disappearance that you'd like all the time. To do, from the top. Yeah, to do in real life. Yeah, if someone's annoying me, I just go, gone. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, so the first TV show I remember watching you in, and we've talked about this in the past, was a TV show called Dead Set. Oh, Dead Set. Um, and for those who don't know Dead Set, 
Uh, essentially, there is a zombie apocalypse, and the only people who don't know are those people currently appearing on the Big Brother. And they're stuck in the house, and you were one of the Big Brother contestants. Yes, I was. I played Angel, who had a really bad attitude, but she was best friends with the crossdresser. So, you know, it's almost like... <laughs> <laughs> um, there's not quite a zombie apocalypse outside at the moment. It's close Thanks to you. Um, apparently the German Big Brother, they didn't know that coronavirus was going on. Really? Yeah. Oh, crikey. So art imitating life there. Exactly, exactly. Um, so Dead Set, uh, Channel 4 um, sent to show that most Halloweens now because it is so, so well conceived. Um, yeah. Davina McCall racing around, um, trying to eat people. Um, I <laughs> loved Dead Set. I thought the whole um, idea behind it was genius. Um, yeah. Charlie Brooker, I believe, wasn't it? Charlie Brooker wrote it, yes. Um, uh, it was, um, when I heard, it's funny because when I heard heard about what it was about, I was like, how has nobody thought of this before? Mm. Because it's true. Who wouldn't know that there's an apocalypse? People who are holed up in solitary, in a way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and the script was fantastic. Yeah, it was really good. Some great actors in there as well. It really was, yeah. I felt really quite um, blessed and honoured to have been a part of that. Especially you spent most of your time splashing around a, a paddling pool. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story about that because later on... Um, when they, when the zombies, if you guys haven't watched it, apology, spoiler alert. But later on, when you, when there's just an invasion of zombies and they see the garden, I was like, well, shouldn't I be in that? Because when I still be in the pool, and then the director said, do you still, do you want to be in the pool all day? I said, no, 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 it's all right, forget it, forget <laughs> it. You're right, good point. Yeah, they've dragged me out, they've thrown me somewhere. Yeah, good point. Very considerate of them. <laughs> Very. <laughs> um, you also made an appearance in one of my all-time favorite naughty shows. Um, and your credit is just listed as office worker in something called Mongrels. Mongrels, ah, oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> I adored Mongrels. Yeah, me too. Uh, one of the it. funniest shows ever. Yeah. yeah, it was so naughty, wasn't it? I mean, how naughty can you get with puppets? Uh, oh. The Pigeon was my absolute favourite character. Who was the Pigeon? Was the Pigeon, um, um what's her face? Katie Brand, I think. I, it might, I think it was, actually, yes. Yeah, I've, got, yeah. I've got the DVD over there. And because I found out today that you're in it, I'm going to re-watch it again. Um, and I, I mean, like, to my friend Dave. I here, and I messaged Dave earlier. And I, sh I would show you the tweet, the text, hang on. And he it's got not... so excited. I mean, it literally was one scene. I literally just put... Just found out Chizzy did an episode of Mongrels. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> we were, was, Dave used to live with me and that was our, our Monday night thing. Mongrels is on, it's 9.30. Mm -hmm. mm. Mongrels was brilliant. I'm so excited to find out you were in that. It's brilliant. Let's <laughs> um, do more. And then, of course, that was just before 2012 and you were in 2012. TV show. Yeah. Yeah, which was about the, um, it was lead up to the Olympics, which um, is now called W1A. W1A, which is another one of my favourite sitcoms. Yeah, it's very good. Um, very they good. recently did a Zoom version up to date, which was hilarious to watch. Oh, did they? Yeah. Uh, um, clever. Yeah, you should give that one a go. It's well done. Oh, well, do you know, I didn't even know Zoom existed until the um, lockdown. Yeah, me neither. And now look yeah. at us. We're living on it. We're li literally. Um, and in 2012, you obviously joined Holby City. Yes. I certainly did. Um, oh my gosh. Um, so I think no other role so far to date has changed my life the way that Holby did. Um, loved it, still love it. So many very, very, very happy memories of Holby City. Um, you still watch the show as well, don't you? I still do. Yeah, when I'm home, I'll watch it because I, like, I like to see what my, my friends are up to, you know? Um, and then I, I see Darwin, I go, oh my God, it's Darwin. And it's funny when they walk down that corridor, like, I know that corridor. <laughs> and I know who's hiding around the corner, who, you know, who's sleeping on what bit. Oh, I just, I just miss it. I did miss you it ever a have a sneaky little sleep on one of the beds? Yeah. Oh my gosh, everybody did. Oh yeah. And then there's one time when I, um, when I gave birth and... Um, in the, the first show. Time. Yes, in the show, in the show. I've given birth twice, which is, which apparently is very unusual for a character to give birth twice in... Um, on TV, 
in the same, with the same character, yeah. Um, so the first time I was in the bed, well, actually, no, I was on the bed, no, I was holding on to the bed. Now I was holding on to Jack Naylor. And then, um, then there was another scene where I was in bed and, you know, they, we, we, we um, rehearsed, blah, 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 blah. And then the crew, they do all their things, blah, 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 blah. And I was lying on the bed. The next minute I was just like, <laughs> gone. And that's what happens. A lot of the, S, the SAEs who, who play patients, they fall asleep all the time because the bed is so comfy. And it's always so hot on, stage, on, uh, on set. Yeah. Yeah, it's wicked. Speaking yeah. of Holby City, I mean, it's not like I'm vain or anything, but... Oh, look at her. The lovely Mo. That was about, what, five stone ago. <laughs> I know this feeling. Um, I'm wearing <laughs> very badly dresses. Uh, <laughs> hello, hello, my name is Mo. Oh, you've got a lot of uh, Mo, and you've made so many friends in that. And you did become a household name. It, do you know what? It just changed my career. Totally. I love her. I love her. I'll, I'll never have nothing but, but you know, fond memories. And I'm so grateful to um, Simon Harper and Ollie Kent for, and uh, Justin, um, oh my gosh, why do I say his name? I can't think of his surname. Oh my gosh, Justin, Justin. <gasps> oh, Justin, if you're watching, I'm sorry. But yeah, for, you know, for, um, for giving me such yeah. a wonderful character to play. And also, you, so you went back into the guest spot. I did, yeah, because I missed it. That and I needed some money. But um, no, I, miss, I really missed it. And, you know, if they asked me back again to do a guest spot, I'd, I'd jump it. Yeah. It's just one of the best places to work. The crew, yeah, the you cast, did a, did a crossover everything. As well. Yes, I did. Kind I did a crossover sort of casualty. with Casualty. Yeah, um, which was fun. Because <laughs> um, I'm, quite, I'm quite loud, go figure. Um, and I don't think they were expecting me. <laughs> I don't think they were expecting that. Um, and then, because uh, the scene was with Jason Durr, and he, he's lovely. Oh, my God, he's adorable. Um, but then the next scene was with uh, my good mate Chucky, and we were just like, rah, da, 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 da. and like the director, went, oh. and second, the um, first assistant director went, All right, it's getting a bit loud in here. And I was like, oh, Sorry, Chucky, because I don't want to get him in trouble. Do you know what I mean? That's his job, that's where he works. Whereas Hobie's where I work. So, yeah, um, but that was fun. That was a lot of fun. Um, after um, that, or oh, during that time, actually, you also did something called sing and dance for comic relief yeah uh where you're partnered with amanda henderson and uh mill tony marshall tony marshall tony. thank you um well. now I, I spoke to amanda um she's also been kind enough to do one of these interviews with me and we discussed you're right uh, she's grand she's grand um uh, made her laugh and embarrass her a little time in her interview which is good fun but we said that the <laughs> You did that not expecting to do particularly well and ended up coming runner up in the entire show. Yeah. Yeah, we was we were shocked. We thought, well, come on, you know. I mean, we were good, don't get me wrong, we weren't rubbish, but well, there were big, probably bigger shows who would have had bigger audiences, who who were more likely to vote. And we came, yeah, we, we came second in our heat um to the chasers, and then we went through to the final and came second again to the chasers. Uh -huh. Got a score to settle with the chasers. Um, but um, yeah, I, I thought we were great. Uptown we, Club. We had, we had a laugh. Yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, it made me laugh a lot when I watched it. Good. And of course, that, I'm not saying it was that particular show that may have caught the eye of some, some producers, because apparently you've done some other dance show. Um, gosh, I can't think what it is. Oh yeah, Dancing with the Stars in America, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, well, strictly speaking, um, Strictly speaking, uh, yes, I, I mean, when you say, when we say you've done it, I mean, you know, blink and you miss me. Um, <laughs> but yes, I was a participant, I was a contestant in 2017 mm -hmm. um, and I had so much fun. Oh my gosh, you know, I've wanted to do Strictly for so long and so to get the opportunity to do it, I just jumped at the chance. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, it was short, but I loved it. But short but sweet enough for them to ask you back to do the Christmas special. Indeed. Now, the Christmas special. So, you know, prior, the first one I had, Pasha, who was a lovely gentleman. Mm -hmm. And then I had um, Graziano Di Prima, who is just, oh, I mean, to look at, he's all right. Yeah, yeah. But, um, <laughs> he's, no, he's just a gorgeous, gorgeous Italian man. And, you know, if you know Italian men, they're very, um, they're very, um, uh, uh, tactile, yes, which I love. So every time, every time he did something right, he'd get a kiss on the cheek, and uh, I love him. And of course, I know his fiance Tujada, who is also so beautiful and and just wonderful and so talented. Um, and um, 
yeah, to get to go back, it almost felt like it was kind of closure for me mm -hmm. because I left too early the first time around and I'm so glad Craig said it. Um, yes. And so, yeah, I felt, I felt like I was closing a lovely door. And you were um, on one of the biggest TV shows of Christmas Day. Indeed, indeed. I watched it back the other day, actually, and I was like, <gasps> you know, it's one of those things where you look back, because you, you, whenever you sit, whenever I see stuff, I just think, oh, I wish I was slimmer. I wish I was, oh, I wish I'd done this. Um, but, you know, nobody's seeing that. Everybody's just seeing whatever they're seeing. So I just Who have to do the splits? I mean, listen, I've, I've always been able right. to do the splits, and um, the week we went out was uh, just before movie week, when we were supposed to do salsa, myself and Pasha, and uh, we were going to do the splits then, but of course, didn't get a chance. So I said, they ever have me back, I have to do the splits. <laughs> I have to do the splits. Um, I've got an audience question, if I may, this time. This is yeah, from uh, Dan in Hollyhead. Oh, hey, Dan in Hollyhead. Obviously, he'd like to know, um, whilst on Strictly, did you ever get to uh, help choose what songs you performed to? And did you manage to keep any of the outfits? Uh, so before you start, they do ask you, are there any songs you, you know, that particularly mean a lot to you? And I wrote down a list. We never quite got to any of them, unfortunately. Um, but, um, um, did I get to keep the outfits? No, I didn't. Um, I got to keep, um, no. So the, the, um, they offered me the white dress that I had at Christmas. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was a bigger size and I thought, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to keep stay this size. So I'm not going to take it because I don't want to, um, because in a few, you know, I'm, in my head, I was thinking down the line when I get to wear it again, it'll be too big. So that was my thinking. Um, but the dresses you can, some of them you can actually buy, but they're really expensive. Like mm -hmm. I did inquire about, I think it was the blue dress that I wore in the first, the first time around. And it was like 1500 quid. And I was like, nah. Yeah, no. Sorry, nah. I I'll part on that one. Dressmakers, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know. Um, you also spent uh, a short time as a panellist on Loose Women. Yes, um, about a year. Yeah, but it wasn't every week or anything. It was, um, I, it was when, as and when. So there's acting, dancing, presenting. You've done quite a lot, really, haven't you? Um, I've also, also done a bit of um, uh, corresponding for Lorraine. Um, yeah. and, um, and I also write. So I, I try to keep busy. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the writing? Because I know that you've written some um, short plays and. Films. So I've written, yeah, I've written three shorts, um, which I've produced and uh, had filmed, and I've just finished a feature, which um, is currently with a producer, um, and I'm writing a sitcom as well. Mm. I love writing. Girl, I um, just love being creative, darling. That's to be honest with you. One of the the things I've liked you doing was uh, Death in Paradise. Ah, uh, yeah. Now, I had a. I know that they have their guest appearances and people like come and then they go and they don't see them again. But your character in that, I thought we might see more of her because there was something about her. Well, we all thought that, to be honest with you. When we went through the table read, all well, the other actors were saying, oh, she's coming back. She's coming back. Because there was an actual line in the script said, we're going to have to keep an eye on her. I thought, hmm. And when I came to watch it, they'd taken that line out. I was like, eh. But she, she's a bus driver, so she could be back. Absolutely. Um, would you go back and do that again? Because that would have been awful filming for you. In the Caribbean yeah. for 10 days. It was hard. Yeah, it I can imagine. Hard. It was, yeah. It's like, it's, it's like, I kind of equate it to, you know, having to dance with the ugly Graziano de Prima. Yes. yes. I don't know why my life is so hard. I don't know why they keep throwing these difficulties my way, but no, many problems. <laughs> somehow I, I managed to just deal with them. Um, so actress, <laughs> dancer, panelist, presenter, writer, you've done so, so much. Um, what's your favourite role to do? Favourite role that I've played or what that I would like to play? The, the, of, of all those. I mean, do you like presenting oh, more than acting? Do you like... Dancing. No, I mean, I love, I love acting. Acting is my uh, number one passion. Mm -hmm. But I also, I do, I do really enjoy presenting and I love writing. But acting, if you, if you said, Chizzy, you can only do one, it would be the acting. Definitely. Would you think nicely into um, the theatre work you've been doing? Yes. So I saw you performing in Edmond de Bergerac last year with mm -hmm. Freddie Fox and um, Josie Lawrence. No, oh, yeah. Um, now, I went along to that thinking, uh, 
I'm not going to enjoy this. And I laughed so much. It was an absolute triumph. Oh, um, that, did you yeah. enjoy that tour? Yeah, that was, I mean, that was a farce. So it was very fast paced and just, you know, silly, but loved it. Loved it. It is, um, I hadn't, I hadn't been on stage. I hadn't actually, well, I hadn't actually performed in a play for 10 years prior to that. So um, it was a bit daunting being back on stage, but there's something about, I mean, I host, so I'm used to being in front of people, but there's something about, you know, there is something about being the, the, the live aspect of theatre, you know, with the, the audience just there. You can't fuck up, number one. And if you do, you kind of, kind of got to just run with it or laugh with it because the audience love it when you mess up. But um, just the, the immediacy of the audience is what I love about theatre. You know, if, they're, if, if it's something funny, you'll find out straight away because they'll laugh. Mm -hmm. If it's something serious, you'll find out straight away how they feel about it because you'll be able to hear a pin drop. So yeah, the there's something very magical about theatre. Um, you mentioned um, hosting then. You regularly host for uh, Monologue Slam. Yes, yes. Would you be kind of to tell everybody a little bit about that? So the Monologue Slam was um, uh, is, is this show for actors, basically. Um, and actors come along, well, they audition, actually, because we had to make sure that the standard was up to, you know, a certain level. Plus, also, so many people want to do it each month. Um, so we audition people, and then they come along, and they perform a monologue on stage. And we have three rounds. We have a junior round, which is the 11 to 17. Uh, then we have a one-minute round and a three-minute round who are both adults. And the judges are cast and directors, directors, agents, um, uh, anybody in the industry, really, who is who has the opportunity to give somebody a job. Mm -hmm. Plus, we have people in the audience um, who are from the industry. So people have had, you know, people have come up and performed, maybe not one, but they've got an agent from it or they've got a job from it. So it's just a wonderful, wonderful platform and opportunity for actors to get in front of people that they probably wouldn't normally have the chance to get in front of. That's great. And mm -hmm. about auditions, you had this lockdown not occurred um, yeah. you would have just been finishing a tour in a play mm. um, co-directed by Kathy Burke called I think we're alone now yeah I think we are alone oh. um so yes co -di is I think we're alone now no now oh my gosh the amount of times we used to sing that trust me and then there was another time I went I think we are alone <laughs> <laughs> And I was trying to think of other songs, but couldn't think of any. Um, but yes, that's, that's Frantic Assembly, uh, co-directed by Scott Graham, who's brilliant. And uh, my, my angel, my, my muse, Kathy Burke. Um, she's one of my heroines. And um, I met her a good few years ago um, after a play. And um, I just fell in love with her because, you know, obviously she's Kathy Burke. Kathy Burke yes. And um, so when we got to work together, I said, right, listen, I just need to get the hero worship out of the way you know gimme 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 for me it's mm. just one of those characters which um which transcend you mm. know there's a few there's few few characters where i go that is a character on its own that that character makes the show but yeah. then everybody else around it makes it even better and that she's one of them gimme 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 so so yeah and she's like she's always like, oh yeah cheers or whatever. and then that was it and now i just i love her and we've been speaking every two weeks since the lockdown started because she's wonderful and it's just it's such a shame that the, the show got you know ended so prematurely but you know there's lots of things that the reviews lots I of worse things that could have happened so um, yeah so maybe it's something that can you revisit in the future if we're lucky. yeah yeah i mean i feel very lucky to have opened a show because you know it's obviously never been performed before mm -hmm. and i've never been in a play before that uh had its well debut so i feel very grateful and also got to work with frank assembly and kathy burke i mean come on you <laughs> yeah, know more of these trials and tribulations that come your way um exactly. <laughs> i gather that um you're a calligrapher i am a calligrapher indeed i haven't done it for years now it's been a long time but yes i i believe if i picked up the calligraphy pen i could still still do it yeah i used to do wedding invitations and mm. um Yes, yeah. And you have another hidden talent. Oh, what's that? Um, I'm really a man. Do you not have a brown belt in something? I do. I got a brown belt. I use it to keep up my jeans. <laughs> 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 yes, I was, I'm brown belt in karate. Marvellous. Although that too has been 
how long has that been? Because I'd stopped when I started uh, Holby because you're not allowed to do Thank dangerous you. sports. Um, but I want to go back to it because I miss it and I love it. I loved karate. Um, I still do. And sadly, my dojo shut down. But So I need to find a new one once, once all this is over. But I need to get back into it because I need to get, well, let's be honest, I need to get the black belt. I need to finish it. Um. I got another. Uh, la, 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 we're filming this at the time of the Black Lives Matter rallies and the ridiculous situation that's going on in America, um, mm. which is just shameful, absolutely shameful. Um, and though America's been heavily featured, you know, we're here in the UK and there are just as many issues over here. Um, mm. She asks if the storyline was right, would you go back to Holby City? where a Black Lives Matter theme and storyline came about, where maybe somebody like yourself would become um, a victim of abuse and such? I would absolutely love to. Um, I would feel honoured that they would ask me to be part of such a storyline. Um, and I would hope that I would do it justice. The funny thing is about this whole um, situation is um, my, my niece, well, all my nieces, but one in particular, she's 20. And she's been very, very vocal about it on social media. And I think, yeah, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Good on her. But I'm so sad that another generation is having to go through this, you know. And to anybody who, who does say, oh, it's not Black Lives Matter, it's All Lives Matter. I just want to say, of course, All Lives Matter. But the reason why Black Lives Matter exists is because what we're saying is we matter too and yeah. the fact is people black people are being executed let's say executed by the police mm -hmm. in america and that's where this came from so it's not we're not saying uh, we're, we're the only ones who are important black lives no we're saying we matter too absolutely stop killing us absolutely so, okay. yeah i would love i would love to do a storyline around that okay and i and think okay. what i love about what? Is, what's that babe Let's hope that somebody from Holby is watching, thinking, ah, let's hope so. we can work on that. Well, also, but also, you know, Holby, they, they handle sensitive situations very well. They write, the writers are very good. So I would be honoured if they asked me. Great. I appreciate that. Thank you. And thank you, Hazel. Thank you, Hazel, for your question. Yeah. Um, you mentioned earlier about uh, meeting and working with Kathy Burke. Um, yeah. You and I went to see a play together. And you met somebody else that you quite like, don't you? Now, I've seen people fangirl. <laughs> then there was the moment that you <laughs> met Bianca Del Rio. Oh, when, if no one says me right, you pushed three of us out of the <laughs> way and ran into Roy's dressing room and literally became a four-year-old child in front of Santa. Uh, oh. <laughs> I was like, and I'm like, I don't know how I got my words out. I mean, at one point I didn't. I love, oh gosh. I mean, you know me, I'm a massive drag race fan. Yeah. I'm a massive drag queen fan. <laughs> and, and Bianca, I went to see her um, on stage and she had me in tears because she's not only hilarious, she's so fucking rude, but yeah. I love it. She's an, in, you know, she calls herself an insult comic. That's exactly what she does. Yeah. And nobody was off. Off, you know, off the sub, off the um, agenda. Oh gosh, I can't even talk. Yeah, um, but then when I met her, <sighs> could you, <laughs> you, 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 you just lose yourself, <laughs> and I don't do it. I don't do that very often. There's not many people who touch me yeah. in the way Bianca touched me, and the way she touched me that night, and then I went home, and I touched myself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, we've we've seen, everybody's but, um, Jamie, haven't we? 
Yeah, what's that, babe? You're being serious when we're talking about Jamie. Everybody's talking about Jamie. And now here, let me just tell you a little story, guys. So I went up for Mrs. Um, Miss, uh, the part yes. of Faye went up for. I mean, I don't know what I was thinking, because, you know, obviously, here's, here's what Faye can do. I thought, oh, yeah, I could be all right. And um, and then I remember sending my agent the next day. Now, do you know what, actually? Yeah. Now, <laughs> yeah. But then she said, no, they want to see you. They're interested. And I was thinking, uh? I'm not a singer. Okay. So I didn't get the part. How, and then I found out that the, the um, Roy, um, Bianca, was coming back. So I would have been working with Bianca. Oh, that you wouldn't count. I would have. No, Every time she said, I would have <laughs> gone. <laughs> but no, I love, I, oh gosh, Bianca Del Rio is hilarious. Yeah. Hilarious. I love that you're a Drag Race fan. Um, I love Drag Race. You've been um, a guest of ours at Pride in Cymru um, yes. like a couple of times as a host. And you have always been the most genial, kind, and giving person. Oh, and thank you. I have seen you with people who just stop you in the street, ask you if you're Alison Hammond. Then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that does happen. Because you happen. have a running joke, don't you? Yeah, we do. I mean, it hasn't hasn't happened since um, lockdown because I've got a mask on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you always take time to speak to people you are lovely and kind and giving and i love that about you um you're a very generous lady with your time thank you do you know what listen at the end of the day why not it takes no energy whatsoever to be nice it takes more energy to be a you know see you and tea i know i try (laughs) (laughs) um we've almost come to the end so it's time for the questions i mean i've got to go and like wash all this makeup off now no, no, we can carry on chatting, but we've got the quick fire questions. Are you ready? Right. Okay. okay. Go for it. What's your favourite film? Shawshank Redemption. What's your least favourite film? Oh, oh, no, that's too hard. There's so many rubbish films. Um, I can't think. I don't know. <laughs> What's favourite oh. song? Favourite who? Favourite song. Favourite song? This is really hard because, of course, now I can't think of any. I can't think of one song. Come on, cheers. What do you like singing? Okay, do you know I'm just going to go Beyonce Single Ladies. Marvellous. What's your least favourite song? I think we're alone now, only because I heard it so many times this year. I am so <laughs> singing that at you next time you come to one of my shows. <laughs> um, what's your favourite sound? Children laughing. What's your least favourite sound? The bird that I heard the other day that Bootsy brought in. Um, I, heard it screeching. I heard a screeching noise. I came out, the bird was dead. So obviously it was um, its last, yeah. I hate hearing anything be, anything in pain. Um, there is a fox that lives on our streets. Yeah. And at night, occasionally it gets a little amorous and that noise is... Oh gosh, it's, oh, it's awful, isn't it? Horrendous. Um, yeah. What job, other than the one you currently have, would you like to do? I would love to have been a lawyer. Oh, I can see you yeah. in that. But, you know what's interesting? My sister is a barrister, criminal barrister, and um, she wants to be an actor. Well, maybe you could just swap over one day. Swap, yeah, yeah. Or maybe get, you have to get you a part in a legal drama. That would be, lo- that, I'd love that. I'd love to play a cop in America. You know how they have like their shirts tucked into their jeans and their badge on the, on the, um, on the um, thing of their jeans? What's it called? Oh, God. I can't find my words these days. Fine, it's fine. It's they, they have their jeans, they, they, tuck, they tuck it on their, their waistband. Well, That's yeah, what yeah. I love. Um, yeah. we, I mean, we talking the other day, because I said I was been watching Line of Duty. Line of Duty's fantastic. I'd love to be on that. Just put it out in case anybody watches, you know. Yeah, you Line of Duty. I'd love, I'd love to be on Line of Duty, please. Line please. of Duty, okay. Please, thank you. Um, what's your favourite treat? My favourite treat is cupcake. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I don't uh, have them that often, and that's why it's my favourite. My go-to okay. is crisps. Crisps, yeah, I'm a crisp. Do you like a crisp sandwich? Yes. Oh my gosh, I love a crisp sandwich. Uh, and, now, and now, when I'm home, well, I've been home for how many months? Three months. Um, I'll take the crisps out of the packet and put it in a bowl. Sit there okay. like, yeah. <laughs> So you think you're outside somewhere being posh? <laughs> Isn't it? Posh. Posh with crisps. Um, the corner of crisps. <laughs> my final quick fire question. Yes. If heaven exists, 
I believe it does. What would you like God to say to you when you arrive at the pearly gates? Um, I believe it does. I would like him to say thank you for what you did. Great. Because without being big headed, I, tr I just try not to hurt anybody. I try and just live my life, you know, carefree and happy. So it'd be great if, if he said that. Brilliant. Um, this is where you get to turn the tables. So, Do I need to ask some quick, quick fire questions? You can just ask me a question. Can I ask you more than one question? Because it's you, yes. Okay. First question. Uh -huh. If you didn't do drag, uh -huh. what would you do? Um, I would like to be an actor. I've always, um, I trained in drama. Um, drama got me through school. Mm. Uh, my, my childhood uh, wasn't great in school. I was picked on, bullied um, for being gay. I, I was, uh, the one place I had strength was in the theatre. Um, so I worked <laughs> with theatre groups um, in Doncaster and South Yorkshire. I went to Poland as part of a, a theatre show. Um, oh. And then I moved to Cardiff to train to be a drama teacher. And my tutors said to me, you're in the wrong course. Let me move you to Welsh College. <laughs> um, but my father was still alive and he was so proud that I was going to be a teacher. So I said, no, I wish it's one of my few regrets. I wish I'd gone to Welsh College of Music and Drama or Mucus and Trauma, as it's called here. Um, and sorry, I have a follow up question. I'm really sorry. Um, do you realise that it's not too late? Yes and no. Um, I, I was an extra on Casualty once, and that's the closest I think I could get. Um, I, I don't have, this is odd, you know, I'm sat here um, with all this on, exuberating confidence. I don't know if I have the strength to go through it again. I am facing a significant birthday next year. 22. Uh, if you say so. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it might be too late for me. Well, okay, sorry, I'm, I've got hay fever, so I'm getting a bit... Um, nasally now sorry excuse me okay. <laughs> um one of the things that i'm writing has um drag in it and obviously you're going to play my drag queen absolutely unless bianca wants to do it um <laughs> 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 but you can but you know you, you're definitely being it um so do you feel more comfortable when you've got the full drag on i feel more comfortable when i have a mask on sure I, I, do you know what? I agree. I makeup is a mask for me. Putting yeah. on my fancy clothes, that's a big mask. Um, whether it's drag or acting, because I step yeah. into a role, um, I, find, I find that very comforting. Um, Indeed. Um, my Sorry. No, that's, that's pretty much it. So, yes, I would like to be, uh, I would love to be an actor. I've got a plan. Would you like to hear my plan? Yes, please. Okay, so my plan is to unify the BBC. Uh -huh. so I'm going to start out um, in casualty as a nurse. Right. Uh, I'm going to do three years there uh -huh. uh, with two crossovers into Holby. Uh -huh. I'm then going to get promoted and move to Holby. Yes. Uh, three years in Holby, same character, a couple of crossovers in casualty, so don't forget me. But then I'm going to meet a man who is a GP. Okay. And we're going to relocate to his new GP surgery which is on Albert Square. <gasps> so the characters move to EastEnders. I then do three years there as mm. the character. And then one Christmas, I go back to Casualty for, the, uh, uh, to, for their Christmas special. Yes. Injured. Oh I then God. go to the Holby special. Yes. Where they look after me and I die. What? And then my funeral is on EastEnders. So I'll have done 10 years playing the one character in three soaps. That's my plan. Do you know what? If that's your plan, then it will happen. Uh, do you know what? It just needs somebody to say, yes, that's a great plan. I think, yes, that's a great plan. <laughs> and let's put it out into the universe. Let's put it in the universe. Um, ladies and gentlemen. I do, I do, no, I do have one more question. Oh, she's got another question. Go on. Would you do UK's Drag Race? No. I know that you would love me to, but no, I wouldn't. It's not a show that, uh, it's a show I love to watch, 
It's uh -huh. not a show I would like to be a part of. Okay, I hear ya. So, uh, and the same with a lot of the other big talent shows. Um, I have been approached to do some of the other ones, and I've always said no, it's not for me. Do you know what? That's fair enough. That is fair enough. But I would love to see you on it. Oh my gosh! But then again, I wouldn't want to see a bad edit of you. No, so, exactly. And that's yeah. something I don't have control of. No, it's true. Yeah. Unless you're doing something live, you really have no control whatsoever. And when you're doing something live, you have no control over your mouth. So uh, <laughs> we have no control. We have no control. <laughs> um, and I think that's probably a good place to say thank you very much. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you for joining me on another appointment with the doctor. Um, a massive thank you to the lovely Chizzy Akadulu. Yay! Um, thank you for me. Thank you for being part of it, my lovely. I'll see you again um, another time with my next interview. In the meantime, folks, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. And I'll see you again. Cheerio.